hi i'm popping in one more time for today to show you the the next the next step that i'm doing on the tables that i showed you earlier today these are the same ones that we started on in my yard a couple of weeks ago that i bought on the facebook uh marketplace used the vinegar to get the cigarette smell out a tsp product to get the nicotine stuff off of them then i put a primer on them because there was some tannin bleed through after i shaved because there had been or shaped <laughs> sanded because there had been some water damage and then i have put a first coat of weathered wood diy paint on this morning and then i decided to go over this i'm going to wet distress this later but today before i leave i'm going to get a coat of apothecary which is another color of the diy clay based paint and natural paint uh on here and i'm using the the paint pixie what's that called french round to get into the little details right now so i wanted you to see that i went over in case you're doing something similar to this in the near future i went over all of these details with the weathered wood and now I'm going over it with my first coat of the Apothecary. I'm going to put, shoot, I'm going to put uh, two coats of the Apothecary on here. And then I'm going to take a damp cloth and go over some of the details to, to make the, the details and the carvings on here show up a little bit better. But I did just want to show you how this Apothecary can just go right over it. I'm just not stressing out over how this goes you don't have to be all talented and creative to make something like this work out it it's very very simple process and i'm hoping i'm probably going to end up wanting to keep these tables in the end but most of the things you see me painting here are for sale in the artisan market so if you are ever interested just give me a holler and ask and i'll give you a price but i'm not here to try to sell you something I'm here just try to share the techniques that that I've learned and you know mistakes that I make as I as I make them you can learn from those the same way that I learned from those but I just want you to see that uh, it's very simple to go through this process hi I see a couple of people are are here watching you can tell me where you're from I would love to know where you're watching from today. I wanted to also share something that was very special to me while I was doing this, which will show you that you can actually sort of do more than one thing at a time here. I'm doing the, I'm going to, I'm using this French round so that I can easily get up close to the parts that I'm going to leave weathered wood in the end and into the details here. And then I'm going to switch to probably the number eight of the paint pixie brush maybe the number 12 but i also wanted to show you this just before jewel left that's my little granddaughter that is always here painting with me so if a 10 year old can do it you can do it hi candy the she brought me this box and said t i just and she calls me t and it was closed up like this she said i just wanted you to know that everything you find in this box is going to be the truth so we are and if you look inside the little box there's a bunch of, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a bunch of little love notes. I think they're love notes. Let's see what I just dropped and see what happens. And I'm going to read those as we paint. Sometimes it's, it's good to just hear about other little things going on. This says, I love you because you are sweet. How sweet is that? Thank you, Jewel. I try to spend as much time as I can with the kids not just teaching them you know, well teaching them you know to be creative and to learn that they can have confidence in themselves to try things you don't have to feel like you have to be an expert and that everything has to be perfect before you try it that's what i'm hoping that i'm instilling in them just jump right in and try whatever you want to especially with stuff like this if it's paint if it messes up put on another coat nobody will ever know see what this one says I love you because you are a friend of mine and I love all people <laughs> well thank you Jewel I'm so glad to know that you love all people that still makes me feel special and lets me know that you got a good head on your shoulders and a good 
heart on yourself there. You get this little piece here and then I'll have a much quicker time going over the legs than I do these details. I'll show you that. I'm gonna, not gonna put this brush because I'm gonna use it again in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead, I whether to get this great big one. I think I will. Get myself another low note. That's kind of motivational. Let's see. I want you to remember that you are worth it and you are loved. I love you. How cool is that? Hey, I'm watching you from Shelton School. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you. And I am worth it and I am loved. Isn't that, that makes my day. That definitely makes my day. You know, it's important to tell, I believe, the people that we love, that we love them and we care about them. And I try to do that and I try to teach my loved ones that maybe it's working. Let's see, I love you because you're positive and heartwarming. How about that? I am positive and heartwarming. Those are important traits to have, but to know that someone recognizes them in you, well, that's pretty special. Makes me feel good about myself that, that the efforts that I try to make sure that I'm positive as often as I can be positive and loving and heartwarming, heartwarming. Woo, man, today. Also have menopause brain that I'm loving and heartwarming. That's pretty special that that's what Jewel thinks of me. This is really, really wide, this uh, wood under here, and I did not put, uh, ordinarily wouldn't even need to paint it, but this is pretty big, so I think it's important, and I'm gonna go ahead and slap a little paint on there. I could probably work twice as fast if I wasn't jacking my jaws so much, but I'm enjoying that too. Let's see what else Joel has to say. I love you because you're helpful a lot to my feelings. Well, how cool is that? I love that you understand that your feelings are important to me and if I'm helpful to them, that lets me know that I'm doing something special and that that's being recognized. This is a day to day. I'm having just all kinds of good stuff said to me. It's nice to say good things to people and let them know you appreciate them and care about them and notice those things. I appreciate that Joel did that for me today. Gosh, I love how the stuff is coming out. I love these colors together. I'm, I'm very, very excited to see how this turns out in the end. I'm going to be off for the rest of the week. My husband has a VA appointment tomorrow, about an hour and a half from here. So we're going to go over there in the morning. And then we have somebody working on our pool in the afternoon. For some reason, our pool water turned green. And uh, I think they need to change our sand in the sand filter or something like that. And my husband has a... a new car and he's getting the windows tinted so we'll have to pick that up tomorrow afternoon so tomorrow is going to be a very busy day Let's see if i can turn this around a little bit i'm working on this side now uh tomorrow is going to be a very busy day and i always take fridays off that's my day for me and that happened a couple of years ago my husband was off on fridays and i was jealous so i'm like oh no if he's going to be off on fridays i'm going to be off on fridays and he's no longer off on Fridays, <laughs> but I loved being off on Fridays, so I kept that tradition alive for myself. Did this little French round to get in there and the little crevices and holes. This is a perfect, perfect brush for this, I'm surprised. I poured my paint to keep from contaminating it. These are called a boat in the restaurant industry. These are things like your French fries would come in at the at the drive-in or something like that but then you can get them at a restaurant supply we used to have a restaurant here in our health food store and get healthy and we still have things like soft pretzels and granola bars and things like that that we bake and we serve them in these boats so i have access to those through the restaurant supply house okay let's see i love you because you're fun to be around, and very encouraging. <laughs> Yay! 
it's working. My attempts at being encouraging are working. Uh, that and I'm fun to be around. I, I love that. I I try to be fun to be around. I love to laugh. I love to have a good time, and I love to be with the grandkids. So that's nice that they're not always just remembering all the times when I'm making them mind and asking them to eat broccoli instead of chips and all of those kind of things. So, boy, this is a special day for me. I think I'll probably go home feeling good about myself. And that's awesome. I want to see what else she said. Let's look. I've got two more in here. What do they say? to dab on there. This apothecary is the the weathered wood. I'm a brown person. I'm not a gray person, but gray is like really in right now, so I'm trying to be uh, understanding of what other people might like as well. But it almost looks like a deep, deep taupe. Like it has a little bit of a brown in it instead of just uh, an outright gray. I think it's a compromise. And I'm not a huge green person but this apothecary you know what it reminds me of years ago my husband and I went to uh, Venice and at that time I was eating whatever I wanted to eat when I wanted to eat it and I tried pistachio gelato and that was the best tasting stuff I ever tasted in my entire been in Louisiana my whole life and just had chocolate ice cream my whole lifetime. And, ooh, I'm sitting on the fan there. Uh, anyway, it was so good. I had pistachio gelato like at least three times a day for the whole month. We were probably in Venice a week, maybe a little more. I, I filled up on it. It was to the point to where he's saying, you've got to be kidding me. I can't believe you're tired of that. You're going to get another, you want another gelato? Man, I made a pig of myself. It was so good. Um, and it was this color. This is the, this is the color. If I was to rename this color from Apothecary, I would rename it Pistachio Gelato. And if you've never tried Pistachio Gelato, even if you don't eat sugar, which I don't anymore, if I was to run across some authentic pistachio gelato, I don't know that I could turn it down because it was some good stuff. Gelato is similar to ice cream, but from what I understand, they put more of, like there would be more pistachio in it in this flavor, more chocolate in the chocolate flavor, more cantaloupe in the cantaloupe flavor, and less of the dairy. But they actually don't use cream they use milk, if I'm understanding correctly. They use milk, so there's there's less of a of the fat from the dairy in there, but it tastes creamier than any ice cream that I've tasted. Normally, I would think that I would like a full fat ice cream much better. If whenever I make homemade ice cream, which uh, I used to do all the time when I still ate sugar more often, and uh, and I'm a chocoholic, so I would make homemade chocolate ice cream. And I, I used heavy whipping cream and half and half and that stuff to make that. Oh, and eggs. I made it like a, what do you call that? Um, when you're using a custard. Oh, my goodness. If you've not made custard ice cream homemade and chocolate and just make it very chocolatey, then, then that's... I must be hungry today. Although I had fresh homegrown tomatoes from the farmer's market, organic cucumbers from Englewood Farms for my CSA, had a little bit of organic cilantro in there, a little bit of red onion, and I put a little bit of lime in there, and it was absolutely delicious, along with some uh, um, all-natural bacon, because I'm also a bacon addict. Um, and I had that for lunch today and it just an hour or so ago, so I should be plenty full and I am plenty full, but this apothecary has got me started. Okay, let's read another note. I love you because, what does it say? I love you because no matter what you, no matter what happens, you're my supporter. Now that is probably the most true of the statements so far 
I have four grandchildren, three children, and Jackson is my son's son, and my daughter Candy has uh, Jewel is Jewel's mother, but my oldest grandchild is Shelton. Uh, he will be 14 this year, and love, love, love him. I used to Shelton when Candy was still in college. She had Shelton when she was in her senior year, and uh, he stayed with me. I didn't work out of the home at that time. I was going to school to be a naturopath, and so I was studying, and I got to have him spend time with me, so we have a very special bond. And then, uh, then Jewel, who is 10, she, Candy's been the manager here at Get Healthy for almost 10 years, and then she's also and probably this is the wrong word, but the seamstress, the person who sews and makes the couture clothes for Sew and Love Couture uh, here at the Artisan Market. Uh, probably seamstress is the old, old Tommy word for that, but I don't know any other word for it, so that's what I'm gonna call it. Uh, and so it's summer now, so Jewel is coming to, to work with her, and Shelton spends more time with his pawpaw and there they do things together and he spends time with me too but right now he's not right now they're picking him up from school and then there's jesslyn she's the youngest um and she's three and she's here sometimes she was here yesterday but it's kind of hard to get your work done with a three-year-old wanting to be entertained and she does like to be entertained let's see my last one I love you because Jesus tells me to love you and tells me that you're a good person. Well, I am thrilled to know that. He, Jesus does tell you to love everybody, and I appreciate that you think that I'm a good person because I do try to be. How special was that? Joel, you made my day with that if you're watching. That that was that I, I will cherish this moment forever that you left me these beautiful notes, and I'm glad that I got to share them with my friends who are here today to learn a little bit more about painting furniture. So here we go. I'm almost finished with this, and like I said, if I would quit jacking my jaws and get painted, I probably could have had the first coat of this, uh, of the legs and the bottom part of this table done over this in less than five minutes. This is not a time-consuming process here. So remember what I'm gonna do with this uh, afterward is I'm gonna go ahead and put a, another coat of the apothecary all over the whole thing, and then I'm gonna come back with, and I'll do this, uh, I'll be back on Monday. So on Monday, uh, if time permitting, with you know, because I do have the my other jobs here, but time permitting, I'm gonna come in here and put the second coat on early of the apothecary, and then I will pop on real quick to show you the wet distressing technique, where I will just let me come around there and I'll show you. I just wanna get this side with my little French round here. That's where I will come back with a baby wipe is usually pretty easy or if I don't have one up here, I'll use a damp paper towel or a damp washcloth and just go over these details a little bit to uh, allow some of the darker to show through. That'll be a little bit backwards because I'll have the darker showing where you would normally want the, the highlighter part to show. Probably should have put the uh, light on over the dark, but I think it's gonna look good no matter what I do because if I have to, I'll come back with a small paintbrush. But what I'm planning on doing is trying my hands at making a glaze and I'm gonna use the uh, I don't know if I'm going to use Big Top or if I'm going to use, uh, oh, what's it called, the Liquid Patina, but I'm going to come back with one of the two and I'm going to mix a little bit of weathered wood in and then come back over this as a glaze. What I'm thinking I'll do is probably go over the whole thing with the 
liquid patina and then mix some liquid patina with some of the weathered wood and come through then so that it can sink down into the details and be highlighted how I want it to do. And on the top, it needs another coat of weathered wood. I'll probably put that on there and then I'm going to dry brush it. So I'll show you the dry brush technique. Let's see if I, my, now my battery's low. I'll show you the dry brush technique and I will either put like a white or, or maybe a sandy blonde or maybe even just some of this apothecary on top and go back and forth with the dry brush technique. So next week we will uh, watch for the lives and try to catch me there. We will do the a dry brush technique and we will do uh, handmade glazed using the, the liquid patina or the big top over this portion of the tables and then we should be finished with these tables sometime next week i appreciate that you joined me today again if you have any questions put them down here in the comments i'm glad you were here and i'll talk to you soon bye